All right, everybody. Oh, happy day. Hope you're doing insanely well. I've got a very special guest today, Matt from The Lead Jerk. Oh, my goodness. Matt, say hey. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hope you're doing well today. Appreciate you joining us. We're going to give you everything you need to know about final expense leads, Medicare insurance leads from an industry insider, from the owner okay, of the corporation. This man's amazing. Good man. I personally sold with his leads off my own pen, okay? I have vetted this lead vendor, and my goodness, I'd tell you if they were a pile of hooey. So, Matt, I appreciate you being on here. We're going to kind of dive into some content that is going to help you, the audience, from getting litigated, from getting sued, from getting taken out of this industry by a landmine that you didn't even see coming. So, we're going to drop this content with you today. You're going to enjoy this. And before we dump into this, jasonfinalexpense.com, I do recruit agents across the nation selling Medicare, life, and annuities face-to-face, but more importantly, in the telespace. So if you need help, reach out. Hope you enjoy this content. So we're going to dive into TCPA. And Matt, I really appreciate you being here. And TCPA sure. compliance, I've got some folks that have reached out to me on my website in the middle of massive lawsuits to the tune of $20,000, $40,000, not good. Um, it's no right. joke. And explain maybe to the audience from your perspective as, you know, running your own agency, you know, your lead generation agency, it's crazy yep. what you do and how important that is to yeah. you. Yeah, I think I, I, we were talking right before we started uh, how many uh, TCPA litigants we actually scrubbed out. This is in addition to DNC, right? They're, they're pretty, pretty easy. Um, it was 221 just this week. Right. So uh, up to now, now there'll be some more data scrubbed. Uh, was it two, probably around three thirty? but that's a lot. That's a lot that um, even with good data, they're still in there. You just have to get rid of them. now with bad data. There might be, you know, 2,200 instead of a couple of hundred, but they're there. So you've got to, you've got to get rid of them and not even, not even call them. Um, and like you said, again, we were talking earlier, it's, it's not an issue. Everything's going hunky door. Everything's going great. You're selling, you're, you're buying these seven, eight dollar, nine dollar leads, right? Everything's going great until it's not until you hit that landmine. And then you get, um, you, you know, the, the, the big issue is, is the agent gets hit, but then their carriers possibly get hit and then their upline gets hit. That's where it gets really nasty because nine times out of 10, those guys are going to be held accountable for all of it. Right. They're going to, it's the agent's going to be quick. looked at as the point of the point of entry um, from everybody. Everybody's going to look. And like, like we said before, uh, these carriers will blacklist you and you won't be able to sell for them anymore. So you got to be extremely careful that there's still avatar leads out there. Goodness, I, yes. I get emails all the time. You know, I'm on these, <laughs> I'm on these emails. So I, I see who's doing what there's still avatars out there. Guys are pushing on people and I'll immediately email back. I'm like, Hey, these were made illegal in 2016. What are you guys doing? Crickets. Ugly. They're, like, they've they're, been illegal for a long time, but yeah. a lot of folks don't know any better. And some agents, it's like anything that's cheap, easy or free yeah. is going to leave you in a bad place. And they, they absolutely work. My man, they work. Avatar they leads were awesome. I mean, they were one of the best leads you could get your hands on for the money. And uh, it's really a shame that they did what they did, but they did it. So we've got to, you know, there's some laws, man, you just got to follow. Right. It's like there's certain <laughs> yeah. things you just don't. I don't agree do. with all okay. of them, but there, you know, there's some you have to follow or, you know, you're going to be in hot water. So uh, that's, that's, that was one of the big ones. But yeah, I mean, people are still, uh, you know, pitching those things and people are still buying them. And again, if they don't know, especially being a new newer agent, um, I mean, truth be told, there's, there's veteran agents out there still buying them. They just, they kind of know how to work around, you know, kind of how to work it. I don't advise that because uh, some of these cats out there on the other end are smarter than you think. So uh, don't ever think you're smarter than, than, than some of these people out there. There's always somebody smarter than you. And a so, lot of times the audience doesn't understand professional litigators. Mm -hmm. What that means to you, the audience, is they're just sitting and waiting. They're like, yeah. okay, yeah. go ahead, moron. Go ahead yeah. and call me. I've set call the bait. Me. I've set the trap, okay? And it's a trap to you, the agent. I got seven numbers waiting on you to call. They are. 
I got they just seven phones just waiting. Yeah. They you do know, that. it's like those, those phones are just sitting on their desk waiting for you, the agent, to call. And when you do, you just stepped onto a landmine. Everything was fine until that thing goes, bam, your ears are ringing. You can't think about selling new business. All you're no. thinking about is, oh, crud, oh, crud, oh, crud. And if you're, okay, in violation and you own like an LLC, you have to get, okay, an attorney involved money yes, money you money you can't you do can't it yourself settle. nope can't you have to have an attorney uh, if you're any kind of corporation at all because you can't litigate it you can't defend yourself in court you have to hire an attorney um and the most prominent and one of the most prolific serial uh litigants out there uh bought a jet about a year ago so but he did and this is where there agents don't know any better. And that's why it's so yeah, important for you, the audience, vet not only your trainer, vet your agency, okay, but, but also vet your lead vendor. Like yeah. here, yeah. Matt does amazing work, okay, Matt, the lead jerk, okay, does amazing work here. But his stuff is compliant, is TCPA scrubbed, mm -hmm. the leads have the tokens, and you're not dealing with this stuff. And I see this. I had an agent that reached out, says he, you know, has a small agency and all that. I wouldn't touch that man with a 10 foot pole because he's using these overseas yeah. vendors and yeah. they're horrible. And I'm yeah. like, do you even understand what the tokens are? Do you understand compliance? And he was like, huh? And he's getting yeah. these really cheap inbound leads and he's yeah. going to blow up. Like he's done. I won't get anywhere near anybody that's yeah. touching stuff like that. It's it's not worth it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we all started somewhere, right? Like, I didn't know about any of this stuff. You didn't know about any of this stuff. But you learn right. real quick if you pay attention. And you got, like, that's why I always tell agents, you have to pay attention to what's going on. Um, the good and the bad, you got you got to know when to go left, when to go right, how, when to just to stay steadfast and do what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, laws change, things change. So people need to stay on top of it. And, you know, with saying that about, you know, different kind of leads, um, the, the tokens on like live transfers that we're doing and, and the, the, the Medicare leads specifically on those and even on the final expense live transfers, um, that's huge because there's no recourse. Like, you know, if somebody wanted to get froggy and do something, you send that over on Discovery and their, uh, their turn is going to go, hey, you know, they got you dead to rights, man you they were fully compliant and you just opened the front door you're not on this you agree to this they've got this they've got your ip they got nowhere to go so um then was saying that it's it, you know we i think we touched on this briefly on the last video we did even if somebody's on a dnc and they were for whatever reason going over and getting involved somehow in your lead flow Mm -hmm. even with a Jornea token, we get rid of those guys. Like, even if it's a compliant lead, but they're still in DNC because they agreed, right. uh, you know, like from a, from like a Google lead or something, we just, we just get rid of them. We don't even, we don't even mess with them. And specifically on uh, live transfer data, before we call it, we know, we know we've got the Jornea tokens, but that doesn't mean they're not on the DNC. It just means they gave they gave us permission to market to them, but we get rid of them so that we don't even have that that issue. We don't want that problem. If you're on the DNC, we're not calling you. Period. So, and it makes it a little harder for us because it reduces the data. You know, it it, it causes us to have to buy more um, and increases the cost of the data. But I think it's worth it not to not to call them. I just think it's one less one less risk that you have to take uh, when you're when you're doing this. And it increases agent profitability for those mm -hmm. of you watching. The fact that Matt is removing certain things from the the list and helping kind of condense down, so you're dealing with more prospects that are probable to have a good conversation with you instead of paying for these leads that are like cannon fodder because this exists they're like oh a lot of these lead vendors don't give two hoots about you okay and, and, yes, and man that, i don't mean to interrupt you. we get that yeah. too i mean we got leads that ain't, i mean i'm gonna tell you we got leads that ain't worth a damn sometimes really it's it boils down to the area 
Uh, maybe the telemarketer is having a bad day, you hey. know. Uh, but we're always, as long as somebody, you know, emails us and says, hey, this lead, I think it's out of criteria because of this and this, and they're, they're on the site, you know, either they're too old, they're too young, uh, they didn't answer all the questions, you know. There's no perfect lead ever 100%. But we really try really hard. Um, but, you know, like, like with everything else, nothing's perfect. But we, we always strive to, like, get it, get it as right as we can. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry about that. I just to- no, I appreciate it. That's all anybody can ever ask for as an agent. Yeah. It's so important that you got the best chance to have a good conversation and even direct mail leads, right? It, they don't just come back with the phone numbers. And you're still paying for them, right? It, it, it doesn't yeah. even direct mail. Yeah, you don't even get a phone perfect. number on half of them sometimes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Or just no, do no not credit call there. me. Yeah. Oh, you've gotten those two. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's a, don't call me. Don't email me. Don't mail me no more. Yeah. Yeah, but I mail it back to you, right? Yeah, to let you know. <laughs> just in case. And you paid for it. So there's no perfect lead for you, the audience. Understand yeah. leads are leverage. You're going to have some leads that are great, some leads that are not. And the one thing about Matt, if they aren't in spec, he's always awesome to, you know, do what he says he's going to do. And that's, that's not always the case. There's a lot of these overseas vendors, Mm -hmm. a lot of these places that really are kind of cutthroat and they'll cut your head off. If, if something goes stupid from a TCP compliance standpoint, you get litigated and we're talking to the tune of 20 to $40,000 you using some of these overseas places, be careful. Okay. Be very careful that you're using good, compliant lead vendors that's a big thing for me and for the men and women that partner we use good compliant lead vendors so it's just for you the audience understand he's cost him more for his data even when he's doing the inbound leads and outbound leads but you the the agent are going to be in a a better place from the long play yeah you're not going to have as much trouble and i'm and i'm being i'm being um you know to say i was doing it 100 for the agents to be a lie i mean i'm Right. I'll be, I'll be selfish myself. I don't want to get involved with that. Right. <laughs> right. You're like I don't got time for that. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. So, um, but, the, the, but then again, I protect me. I protect the agents. I protect the agents. I protect me. Um, I, and I did a, I did a discovery call, uh, about a year ago with this, uh, lead vendor as you know, I was, posing as an agent because i want to see what these guys are saying to people and i said well what about dnc you know and tcpa and all that they're like oh yeah all you got to do just um go somewhere on your uh you know your agent website and just put on there that uh you know anything that comes back with blah 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 you're you're not uh you're not you're not at fault or it doesn't have anything to do with you I'm like, what? That that's not gonna that's not gonna hold up in court just because right. you say something like that on your website as an agent. Um, I, I was like, no, form fields or something like that online, maybe because you're getting permission. But this is just with any old type of lead, telemark, whatever. They're like, oh yeah, just throw it on your agent website. And just say that you're not responsible for any kind of, uh, you know fines or or misuse of data so there's guys and that was obvious to me that these guys didn't know what they were talking about and were just you know playing on the the very low cost end of a lead and just shoveling out and i'll say this if you're paying seven to nine bucks ten even ten sometimes for a lead uh it's being shared (laughs) Right, exactly. It's, it's been like sold business. more than once. Absolutely, no doubt. And oh yeah, they're exclusive. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. it's like toilet to paper that's been around the. Yeah. Now, <laughs> nasty. now we get that question all the time. You're least exclusive, and I'm like, yeah, they are. And and the, the infrastructure. I'll give credit to those guys. They've got good back end processes to be able to resell a lead over and over, because the amount of money I would have to spend to keep up with that just for the infrastructure to say, okay, this lead was sold during this time to this person and this time to this person. It's, it's a, it's a, a little bit to keep up with and to do. I don't have time for that. I don't want to spend the money even to do that. Uh, and it's crooked. So yeah, once the leads are done, they're gone. You know, we started even, um, 
trash in the portal stuff after 90 days. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if you haven't ordered in 90 days from us, it's not to say your, your orders that are older than 90 days are not going to be in there. But if you haven't ordered in 90 to a, we, we might stretch it to 120. We just delete the account because there's no reason to keep them in there. But, you know, like I said, I wouldn't call lead order in 60 days anyway, even if you've got leads going back years in our portal. That's maybe just for record keeping for you that you want to see how many leads you've ordered and, you know, kind of look at that kind of stuff. But I absolutely, I wouldn't touch that stuff with a 10 foot pole. Exactly. If you order, if you, if you bought leads from us two years ago and they're compliant, right. And you work them and then you work them again, two years later, there's some of those guys on there that are going to be on the DNC. They're going to be on there. They added their number. So Absolutely. don't, don't do it. Just don't call them. Just stay current on stuff. You know? It's not worth the risk. And it's like no. agents, it's so important that they first off have an exclusive lead. And there's IMOs as Matt knows. And I know that will tell you some 10, 11 buck lead that they sell internally. And then they're selling it to five other people, oh six, God. seven other people. You know what I'm talking about and who I'm talking about. Man, it's, it's prevalent in with the direct mail leads too. Over yes, and over and over sold to you. And you're running a 65, 60% commission rate. That's why. Yep, exactly. Some of these captive houses and even independent houses do the same model. It's ugly as sin. And I but, cut my teeth there. Right. You know? Yeah, doing it the hard way like that. So, uh, and I can tell you, we're working 100 shared leads. You can do it. Sure. But running 100 shared leads and age leads like that versus 25 or 30 of your own that come in is night and day, man. It's just night and day. If, if you've got everything else on point. Right. Uh, of course. You, you know what I mean? Have, yeah. Oh, so absolutely. Like you can have all the leads in the world. And if you yeah. don't have, we'll talk about, you know, if you don't have good scripts and you don't yeah. know how to handle it. It, it gets ugly no matter yeah. if you have the greatest leads and sometimes agents will blame the leads because they think a lead is a sale. If you don't have a good script in telesales specifically face to face, you can flub around. You just can. Yeah. But in telesales, you got to be tight. Yeah. And I'm, I'm real sensitive to guys and, and gals that have to start out whichever way. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, even when they have to start out at lower commission rates to get free leads, or whatever, just know that those free leads most of the time aren't the, the, the good leads, you know, mm-hmm. they're not the Glenn Gary, <laughs> right? They're not the Glenn Gary leads. Um, so, but again, I understand where people have to start out sometimes like that. So, but work it. If you had to start out like that, work it, work it hard the way you need to do and inch your way out of that, you know, and, and get, get to the, get, get up further um, to where you can demand a higher commission rate. And then, uh, free yourself up for um, some better leads because that then that's just going to propel you even further. You, you still work, but you're so much wealthier by like, yeah. you know, I was captive back in the day too, working garbage leads. Seriously. It was like old age stuff. It's like, everybody's fighting over the same piece of meat on that bone. And I've been there myself and it's, it's frustrating. And to have a good lead that's exclusive. Oh, it's night and day. It's like, are you kidding me? I get to eat all that meat myself. I don't have to. Shoot yeah. It and run let me, after let me it. ask you this, Jason, how do you feel about, because I kind of, I've kind of went back and forth on this. Right. Uh, going through that, right? I think it made I think it actually made me a little better because I struggled a little harder to to do that. Um, not saying starting at 60% or 65% is a smart sure. thing to do. I don't think it is, but I think there are ways to get higher commission rates for agents and still they can figure out some way to um, grind it out there for the first few months um, because that was a huge learning experience for me, you know, and then once I started really getting in the fresh good leads, then I was like, wow, man, this is like really not as hard as I thought it was going to be long-term doing this. Um, How do you feel about that? I mean, you know, I I kind of appreciate what I went through. Don't recommend it. But right? it helped me. Well, you got to embrace that struggle. I mean, I, yeah. I'm completely in birds of a feather. Bleh, I can't talk. It's Friday. Birds of a feather <laughs> with you on that. It's it, you have to go through that that struggle, and that's where you know in my agency we go through a five day mm-hmm. telemastery program where we right. train 
hard. And I mean hard before you even touch a lead. And we do scripting and rebuttaling and everything's turnkey system so that the agent has the best chance for survival in an industry that eats a lot of folks alive because all they're given is here's a free script. Here's my website. Go watch this video and you'll figure it out as you go. That stinks. But an agent that starts off, if they start off with like massive amounts of a little lower quality lead for sure, but they cut their teeth on that. If you can get it on that where you can get yeah. it off you can do it on anything at that point because yeah. you get a good lead and it's like you start a grinning because you're winning in a different way. And it, yeah. so to have that struggle, you've got to sweat like Matt and I know in this industry, you and I had to sweat to get where we are in our careers. Now yeah. it didn't come cheap. It didn't come yeah. easy. It didn't come free. It was a lot of work, but to be able to struggle a little bit, you, you have to embrace that pain. If you want kind of the best chance for you, the audience yeah. to have profitability, that pain yeah. is necessary. It's needed. And we go through that pain, okay, in, in my agency, we actually do yep. this through the training environment of five days straight. We have one day called Hell Day, and we're yeah. just, we're hitting hard. Right. But when the agent is graduated from right. this, they don't have to blow all this money on leads like they would have if they just got a script, got some right. real web training, somebody nitpicking their calls and not really showing them how to do it right. That's caustic um, yeah. learning, but it happens in this industry. And to, to embrace that struggle, in my opinion, helps that agent get the best chance of survival because you and I have had to go through some tough waters. Yeah. But, but it benefited us. I mean, yeah. if you, and, if, I, I, and too, with saying that, Jason, I feel that, you know, some, some agents that are, especially with all that's gone on in the last couple of years, right? Career changes, people being downsized, people having to choose to do something else for a living. File expense insurance period was a godsend for a lot of people. Now, so for some people got in it, they failed out, but that happens in any industry, right? Sure. But um, what I what I what I hope I don't see is a trend of people thinking that just because they get licensed, that uh, they can, you know, it's gonna, it's just everything's gonna fall in line. A, B, C, one, two, three, right? It's not, it's not like that. So expecting, you know, going through that, that grind, like you said, with that training um, opens your eyes to the fact that uh, what you see a lot of ads say about doing final expense or any, a lot of different other opportunities out there. It's a macro view, right? Yes. It's uh, it's the big picture view. Yeah. All of it's true, but you got to do this, this, and this to make that happen. So yeah. Can you make 25, 30 grand a, a, a week or, or excuse me? Well, you you can actually, okay. but a month in, in FE sales. Absolutely. But sure. there's a lot of little rocks. You got to put in those big rocks to make that. Happen. <laughs> right. It's It's not going to come quick. Yeah. And it's like, you're, I love that. Cause if we're a lot of agents, they think I have an insurance license. That's my lottery ticket. I'm going to get rich team, yeah. submit team, submit. It's the farthest thing from the truth. Yeah. You got to call it team sweat. Like, yeah. You want to be successful team yeah. sweat. Let's go. It, like start and sweating. it doesn't. And it, and also my friends in marketing always told me that happens till sale is made. So it doesn't matter. You, you've got to do these things, but it doesn't matter if you've got everything memorized as far as the carriers, coverages, exclusions, riders, living benefit, all that, right? Accelerated, you know, any, all that, you know, right? right. I know it, man. I know it. Uh, none of that matters unless you know how to approach these leads and your prospects to get in front of them, to make them pay attention to you. So, you know, you could take somebody that's got, you know, some less, you know, and there are out there, I'm not going to call any names, but right. you could take somebody that's got less than desirable, some less than desirable carriers for whatever reason and put them against somebody that's got, you know, six or seven really good carriers. But if this guy over here understands the psychology of a final expense or a Medicare prospect, they're going to blow that guy out of the water because he's an academic and that's not going to get it done. That never gets it done. So totally. um, you have to know it, but it only comes into play when you're selling. So, you know, that's one thing I've seen too. And a trend I'm seeing, Jason, too, mm -hmm. as far as 
geography goes, I've seen a trend of more people ordering statewide and multi-states. Um, the people that are on counties, they're, they're going to be okay, I think, for a while longer, um, especially if their counties are a little larger or if they're in a state uh, that maybe the counties are just a little sparse, but there's still a, a good density of population in certain areas of the counties. Um, but most of the time, it's going to be multiple counties, too, they're going to have to have just because of the way the data is getting whacked. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. There's, there's a trend of that. And we, we both know if, if, if you're ordering statewide or multi-state leads, you're not, you're not doing it face-to-face. -face, you know? Right. So there's a little trend there. I'm seeing about a 27 and 28% uptick. As of right now, what, March 11th, 2022 than what I did last year at the same time. So <clears throat> we're, there, there are more people that are working from home, you know, especially with gas. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I, it's a terrible thing, but uh, if, if, if you think, if you're a face-to-face -face agent, you've been doing that a long time and, you know, you think that there's a chance uh, <laughs> You might want to explore working with Jason, <laughs> doing telesales or something like that. I would, I would be, I would be doing some uh, exploring and learning your what your options are and how this technology works to make it easier for you. Um, because I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me in five years of sitting here and it's all telesales, and that's just you know the expectation of the industry at that point. Mm -hmm. Medicare has always kind of been really on top of it for that though. Now they right. way they were they were doing telesales back in the 90s before um, it was cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Really. Yeah. You know, and I even bought into it for a while. Well, I don't know how Final Spence would do over the phone, but there's a way to do it. Guys are doing it all the time. There's there is efficiency. Huge and telesales, telesales, telesales is so efficient. Like uh, the costs yeah. are going up for all those face-to-face -face agents. I feel for yeah. them because like, your lead yeah. costs are spiking. Like what you're talking about, you can't yep. acquire the leads in a tight geography like you could a year ago. Yep. And, and direct mail, their prices are spiking. You're still they're, they're still very successful because they've got tons yeah. of face-to-face -face agents that partner yeah. as well, and they're they're yeah. beasts. But their costs are just going up. Where a telesales yeah. agent. It's so much more efficient to get it done mm -hmm. by phone. Your lead costs are way less. And when you have a good script, you've got good leads. It's magic if you put in the work. It still looks like sweat and yeah. working and working and working. There's no shortcut here. Like a lot of times people will tell people, oh, if you sit in your pajamas and money just rains from the sky, that's a lie. Uh, it, nah, you got to get dressed and treat like a, like a career. It's all Absolutely. up here. Like, you know, it's – uh. You just feel better, you know. You just perform. I think you perform better. I mean, why does your car drive better after you get it washed, <laughs> right? Or when it you always, were younger, right? You get basketball it always shoes. Does. And you think you can dunk the ball, and it's like you're four foot two, right? But I can yeah. dunk now. I got new Nikes. Exactly. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I can get some air. Right. So, yeah, you just um, all that kind of stuff comes into play, and I think a lot of that goes but it would would be true for anybody working from home, doing anything, uh, really. Um, is time again, time management and, you know, uh, self-reflection on what you want to get done and, and, um, discipline because look, even if you work for a fortune 500 company from home in a, in some kind of position, uh, virtually, uh, it, you're still your own boss. I mean, you still Ooh. run your life LLC, right? No matter what you do, it's, it's, a, it's your business. So, um, that's the way I've always looked at it. I kind of, I, I try to tell agents, they should, you know, really treat it seriously like that. And, you know, when you're on your own, man, and when you're off, you're off. I've had to, Absolutely. I've had to, uh, you know, I, I've had to even take that advice myself because sometimes dude, I'm checking, I'll check emails that, you know, I'll get, you know, I'm older, man. I get up to pee at night. So right. I know I'll check my email, you know, sometimes right. at 1 a.m. I, I can't do that anymore. I got to stop. You've got to, 
um, compartmentalize that in because if you if you do that, you're going to be more effective during your working hours. You don't feel so, uh, I guess, stretched out over Thank things. You. So I really, you know, unless it's just some kind of emergency or something, you know, that can't wait, I just, I don't check it anymore. I just try to keep that during business hours. Blocking is crazy valuable. So for yeah. all you watching, time blocking, okay, protect yeah. your most valuable resource, and that's your time. I promise, like, what Matt's telling you is such a gem to you, the audience. Take that to heart. Um, definitely be hearing that. Time block yourself. You'll be more powerful when you're on the phones if you just stay laser focused on that timing. And then when you're with your family, go enjoy your family. Go work out. Go for a walk. Yep. Do what you do. Rest, okay? And if you're getting older like us, okay, myself included, yeah, we do get up a couple times in the middle of the night, okay? It never used to happen. <laughs> it is what it is, okay? Don't check your phone. And I do yeah. it myself. So I'm like the pot calling the kettle black here because I do yep. it myself. So take my advice. Don't always do what I say, you know, but, you know, try to yeah, do what and I don't the, do. And right? like blue light, you know, at night. Or <clears> if you're trying to get up in the morning, work from home, and you're, you know, you really need that that good night's sleep, that, that blue light, man, from our phone and TV, you know, I mean, all this sounds like it had nothing to do with Don Smith's telesales, right? It, but it does. It, I mean, it does. In a good night's sleep, uh, that way you're up and you can, um, you know, perform, uh, you know, more efficiently with what you've got going on. Uh, and, and it's important you're drained. You've got nothing to give. Like you can't pour exactly. from an empty glass. Right. So it's like, if you're up yeah. with blue light and we look at enough blue light, Matt and I do in the course of our days, yeah. with screens up in our faces every two seconds. You know, I work 12, 13 hours a day. I love my work family, but it, I do it all the time. So like to add on more of that in the middle of the night, it's dangerous to you, the agent. And I'm guilty of it myself. Okay. Confession is good for the soul, but I got to stop it sometimes yeah. because you've got to re-energize yourself so that you can be at your maximum level of effort and enthusiasm when you get on that phone because you've got to bring your best foot forward yeah. if you want to find success in the best ways because if you're like coming in at half speed you don't get a second chance to make a positive first impression with your leads right. you just and, don't you're you know people the agents they i think it, everybody gets in this habit where they're like i'm saying the same damn thing over and over and over but it's the first time that person's hearing it hey. from, from you, right? It's the first time that person's hearing it from you when you make contact with them. They don't know you said it 30 times earlier that day. So you have to just act like it's the first time you're doing it. That's the only person you're calling that day. And you're 125% focused on them. Um, Absolutely. You know, but it's uh, I wanted to kind of touch on, something that it's kind of you know a thing where with with the different leads you got you know direct mail facebook google you got i ain't telemarketing right when agents work tell leads specifically now there's some companies out there that do these they don't even provide a recording the main reason why we provide recording is number one proof of call made number two compliance proof Number three, to gather some information that's going to help you, you know, uh, time to call back. What's your favorite color to trigger? Maybe it triggers a memory of them getting the call. Um, you know, who would be your beneficiary? What plan are you interested in? Interested in all of them? You just want to see everything? Are you interested in high, medium, low? All that kind of stuff. Some agents that are either new or they're new to telemarketing leads they'll immediately go into listening to recording first and professional voyeurism brother that's yes, what it is it's like yes. you're voyeuring instead of being about yeah. the very thing you should be doing which is get on the call yeah. right like yeah and they prejudge direct mail too if it's sloppy handwriting yes. oh it's yes. gonna be a oh this person's got xyz disease i don't want to call them i can barely read we've the handwriting all done it. we've all done it when i first got into final expense i would call my upline guy and I'd say, man, this lead sucks. And he's like, why? I was like, they didn't even put a phone number down. He said, well, go online and look them up and try that. If that don't work, door knock it. After 200 times of getting that kind of lead in, I didn't care anymore. Right. <laughs> I was like, 
I don't care. They sent it back in, man. That's all I care about. And I'll, find water. I'll find a phone number. I'll <laughs> right. find an address. I don't care. Uh, you know, leads a lead. So, um, but so what it does, what it does though, specifically outside of a direct mail, a Facebook or a Google lead, right? They don't come right. with recordings, right? So there's not that, there's not that, you know, it, it can be a good or bad thing, right? If they mm -hmm. listen to the recordings first, it can give them a, a false sense. Ooh, got a little stickler there. It can give them a false sense of either positivity or negativity. It could go either way. It could sound like a great, strong lead. They know they're going to close this person and they call them up and they're just, they're just like one of the hardest ones to extrapolate the information from and to get them to take the next step. And then you got the ones that, you can listen to you're thinking this is going to go absolutely nowhere and you call him and you're right him his wife and his son so you know prejudging based on the recordings is just not the thing to do uh you know the the main reason you should use them is if you call somebody and that they're saying ah, i never i never talked to anybody I never said, I never agreed. You can, you got two choices then. You can say no, ma'am, or no, sir. Yeah, yeah, you did. Actually, I have the recording here. Would you like to hear it and play it for them? Dang. Or you can just ignore it and keep going. Right. Which is the wiser way to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, and this is the same thing. Like you do great Facebook ads and Google ads and how, you know, agents sometimes have it where it pre-populates on their calendar, right. To set an appointment. Right. Agents do the same thing. They think that because the appointment's on their calendar that it's amazingly just going to be a sale. And then they just sit back when they should have just called the sweet prospect and pursued a conversation. It, it, it's it's crazy how it doesn't or when matter. Or somebody checks the box on certain, and we don't, we, we have the ability to do it. We normally don't do it because, and this is why, well, the prospect will fill out the Facebook lead order form and check the spot for SMS text and hit submit. The lead goes to the agent by email and spreadsheet format with a with a door knocker card. If it's a local lead, they don't get them on statewide. There's no use for them. Exactly. And then SMS text them on the cell phone. Hey, I'm interested. They just, you know, they just hit send and they hit that SMS text thing that lets you know, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean it's any any more hot than what it would have already been. It, I'll tell you what that is. What that is, that's a way for certain lead vendors to BS agents. That's what that Absolutely. is. Absolutely. There's okay? a lot of that in this industry too. Yeah. That's that's a way for them to make you think this lead uh, has more fire to it than if it didn't have that. They don't care. They just check the button. They're like, eh, okay, we'll text them to make sure, you know, this form goes through. That's all they're thinking. Same thing I think when I fill out something. So as we see it, it's true, right? And agents sometimes they're the the ones that fall victim to a lot of things yeah. where it's like, oh, there's the new way of selling final expense insurance, the new way, right? And it's like they get lost in the weeds, get hurt and thinking that, oh, I can let, you know, some automation call and sell it and do the heavy lifting and I can just sit back and work. 15 hours a week and make full-time money. It's such a no. line of, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, the only thing I see changing with automation with lead technology is AI to a certain extent. That's all on backend stuff for data yeah. mining, right? Uh, that's all about finding your ideal prospect, stuff like that. That has mm -hmm. little to do with actually, you know, presenting a product Right. So people don't like to, to be sold to, but they love to buy. So, if, right. yeah. So if you can present in a way that makes them feel more that they're making the choice, you're going to get a lot more sales that way. And, you know, again, these, these guys and gals don't, don't discount, you know, a lead because of something you hear recording the best agents that, that, that I know that, that deal with us, right. That order consistently, that by the way, by the way, very rarely ask for a replacement. It's funny how that works out. Consistency is key. Uh, yeah. They uh they don't listen to them ever. Right. 
they never they like I could care less about that. Um, I think we've got we, uh, one uh, out of the there's out of probably the last three months one of those guys I think he requested a replacement because I think it was the wrong area or something. So yeah, obviously sure. right, but I think he still sold them. <laughs> right, it is like so, I bought leads they from you and it's like you get facebook leads where the phone number is wrong and yeah. for the audience i've asked matt for a replacement zero times when the phone it, 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 just go get it right it's like yeah it's if you got a bunch of leads and you're successful you're just going to be getting after it. not saying that matt doesn't take good care of you know agents when yeah, this stuff happens he does matt's good people okay which is rare in this industry but sometimes it's it just is what it is. And successful agents are committed to always purchasing leads. Just drop content today on it where you always, always buy leads. You do it every week, do it every week, do it every week. If you want the wealth, you've got to have this pipeline. Even McDonald's cannot stay in business if they don't keep bringing the burgers and yeah. the patties. Eventually they go out and you wonder why you lost your business. Well, as an insurance agent, you've got to find some good <laughs> vendors like Matt or others that are vetted first off, are TCP compliant second off. And then you've got to figure out, do you want a telesales you know, lead that maybe is a Facebook lead, a good SEO lead? Maybe you're going to go an inbound lead. Okay, maybe you're gonna go a telemarketed lead. Maybe you're gonna go total outbound. SEO leads are great. Facebook leads are great. He's got all of those. And it's like, you just gotta figure out your balance of what you like. Leads yeah. are like ice cream. I may like, okay, chocolate with sprinkles. XYZ agent over here may like just plain vanilla. And the beautiful thing about Matt is he's got them all. Okay, you've got, SEO leads. And we can talk about SEO too. Your SEO leads you've got, your Facebook yeah. leads, how that shakes for the audience to so kind of understand a little background. Yeah, the I would say that on those, I would say probably out of the two between Facebook and um, Google. Yeah. Facebook's probably stronger, to be honest with you, even though it's interruption marketing. Um, now, that that tie changes during times of the year. Sometimes Google's stronger because sure. people are searching at certain times. But um, if it if it were me, I would probably at least investigate the Facebook leads first. And and if that works for you, don't worry about Google leads. Okay. If mm -hmm. you're somebody that that um thinks maybe you would like more SEO type leads and try the Google. If they work out for you, stick with those. Just, you know, you can, you can try different ones to see which ones fit your, your ability. But, you know, we should really do a, uh, do a video one day, Jason, on, and you may have before, but on how to actually budget for uh, oh, your business, right? Not just leads, but other stuff, but leads specifically because that's probably going to be your most expensive portion of your of your business, of your agency, right? So Absolutely. knowing how to say, okay, I'm going to spend this, 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 this. I'm going to order four or five times in a month. Now, how have you paid for it? I always, I rent up eight, well, six, seven thousand dollars sometimes a month on a card. That's what it was for. And then you know, some of these guys probably going, holy crap, man, 7,000. Yeah. in a month on direct mail. And then when my commissions were paid, I just paid it off. Absolutely. So there's a way to do that with any lead source. Um, but we, we, yeah, we should explore that because some guys, you know, right. gals out there, they just don't, they, they don't, that's something that a lot of times your carriers never touch on that. And I think very few agencies touch on that. They just tell them, buy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, well, how do I, how do I get rid of that debt when I get paid? You just, you know, it sounds simple, but there's a process to it to make sure you don't get yourself in trouble. There he is. And you got to spend money to make money as an insurance yeah. agent. You do. Like, it's not an industry you hop into if you're broke, unless you want to bang your knuckles off. You can make money without buying leads for you, the audience, but it's tough. Okay. It is tough. You're, you're better to buy leads consistently. Okay. I've 
purchased leads from Matt many times and they're amazing. They work well, but you got to work them. It doesn't like, oh, it's just I called them once. No, you got to be always about it. But you've got to buy leads every week. And like Matt and I are talking about, don't be afraid to use a card. Go get yourself that ball thrown at you so you can hit it. Yeah. But then you when you pay it off, pay it off like when you get paid or pay it off like a checkbook idea. But I get so much money. Okay. Over the course of my career, I call it, it's free money because I use points on my card. I get points. Right, yeah. I don't keep the balance on there. And then it's like, yep. I'm now lowering by a couple percentage points. Cause I'm using it like a checkbook. Yep. It's amazing as an agent to be able to, to do that, yeah. but you've got to have leads to make money. You got to spend money to yep. make money. Like if you just buy one batch of orders, you buy his SEO leads yeah. or you buy Matt's Facebook leads and you get after it. And then you go just only buy one batch and you roll your month. And then you wonder why you're starving two, yeah. three weeks later. Well, you're no different than McDonald's. That it, failed exactly. To have delivery. You got you need to, you need to keep them coming. And again, yeah, it's self-service when you say that, right? But I don't care where you, this, this is across the board, whether you're face-to-face, -face, whether you're a telesales agent, I don't care what kind of agent you are, right? All lines, auto, mortgage protection, mortgage broker, whatever you are, you've got to keep the leads coming in. You've got to keep them coming in. That's your lifeblood. But, you know, and I'm not about running up debt, right? I don't, I hate debt. I hate it. I do not like debt, but there is a thing it's called good debt and it can, and it's where you leverage yourself to move up and you know, companies do it all the time. They borrow money, have debt and able and able to leverage yourself up and, and, and do better and make even more profit. So, and like you were saying points on some of these cars, man, I think we get, three or $4,000 back on one of them because we just run a ton of stuff through it for our business, just a ton of stuff. And uh, that's free money. So, and I know, listen, listen, guys, I know there's some of y'all that are watching this that are brand new, just getting started. And you're like, these guys are on here talking about doing this and they don't understand where I'm at or where I'm sitting. I don't have jack crap right now. I'm just doing all I can to to get my carriers rolling and to get that first lead order, man, I'm telling you right now, I know where you're at. We've I both have been, been there. broke as hell in my life. Okay. I have, I know, I know how it feels. And, uh, the, the truth is you got to take that risk. You can do it, man. You just got to take that risk. But I would say, make sure your scripting's on point. Train for that. Test it out with people. Find somebody like Jason that can train you. You know, get that squared away first. Then, then start spending your money on leads. Don't do it backwards. Don't get thrown in a room with 50 other guys and, and you're just a conveyor belt of agents for a, some IMO that doesn't care about you and they don't teach you how to actually script up for whatever kind of lead you're going to be working, make sure you've got that down first, because if you don't, you're going to blow through a lot more leads that you could have closed. And lead out money that's so going to make you a lot more money in the long run. I would say do not order leads until you have that down. And again, that doesn't mean memorizing your carriers and all that, right? You can exactly. do that on the fly. You can figure out, while somebody's on the phone with you or on a virtual setting or face to face, you can flip through, you can figure it out right there. You right. don't have to have that perfect, but what you have to have perfect is your script to motivate them to listen to you. Uh, so you can move it to the next step. So yeah, I'd say it's smarter for guys. Just hold off, man. Uh, until you feel comfortable with that script, but for goodness sake, you know, learn that script. I hate seeing guys fail and there's a lot of them that do because they're, they're sold, uh, you know, incorrect, uh, information about what all this is. They really are ugly. I mean, I, I see agents from other agencies that come over. They're not getting trained. They're giving some free script. Go watch a video. Hope you make it. Find a study buddy. The Good guy's luck. equally as screwed up. If you need help on a live phone call, it's like, go schedule a Calendly. It's like, what the, I'm on yeah. the phone with Mrs. Johnson now. And it's like, 
the way that I work when I partner with agents, agents have access to me like in real time. Uh, it's we've got support because we can figure out the underwriting on the fly, but you yeah. don't get a second chance to make that script happen. That script needs to be tight. And you know, it's when you're already at that point of when you're already to the point of them needing to call you for a underwriting question, right? Sure. That means the script worked. It's already done. Yeah, exactly. So that it's a, again, to be able to get to that point, you, your script has got a, I'd, I'd say it's the most important thing. It's the mo. it's the number one most important thing for a finance finance agent is, is that is when they call that, that prospect that first time, what are they saying? And do not ask them if they want to buy life insurance. 100%. Don't do it. It's it a happens, nail in your right? coffin. You're gone. Oh, you're done. But it's done. But for those that are watching, it's like, get your script right, for sure, from what Matt and I are saying to you. But we've also been at the starting point. We've been at the starting blocks where, okay, we didn't have a lot of money starting off in this industry, okay? And you're in a place where you got that fear of failure, and you can find success, but you've got to leverage, like we're talking about. Sometimes you got to leverage your assets to yeah. accelerate. You want to launch in this industry, you've got to have a lot of leads. You've got to trust the laws of large numbers you can't buy 20 leads 25 leads and expect to make it it's like you're on the world's smallest okay little merry-go-round you're gonna get dizzy and puke just like you did in grade school mm -hmm. you gotta have enough spin okay you've got to have a lot of leads so that it's like that carousel effect at the fair where you're like oh this is fun i can go up and down you're gonna have an up and down day but you're gonna have more decisive yeses more wins if you got a good script if you've got lots of of opportunities, lots of conversations. Yeah. And then it, it takes away the scariness of if I only bought 25 leads from you, brother, and I've bought leads from you quite a bit. And a lot of great agents have bought from me. You do a great job or wouldn't have you on here. And I appreciate you. But sure. if I only bought 20 leads, brother, and I got on your leads, only at 25 conversations in the course of my week, oh man, I'd, I'd go puke right now. I, yeah. It would put me in a bad place because it's like, I can call 25 leads and an hour and then what am i yeah. gonna do keep calling them i mean that gets yeah. real ugly yeah I, and i would say you know for guys just coming into this uh brand new or if you're uh, uh, you know a vet but you're exploring you know other other variables in your career uh live in, live live in abundance right um what's what's the most likely outcome if you invest in your business that it's going to fail or it's going to make it chances are, if you put your money where it should for that oxygen to come in for you to even have the opportunity to make that kill, I would say you got a much bigger chance of success of trying to, you know, figure out that abundance mindset. Um, because, and we touched on this last video, Jason, right? Absolutely. There are there are jobs and careers out there that you there there aren't there's no leads, right? Um, car sales is a perfect example. There's really Amen. no leads for that, right? The leads, yeah, you got people calling and asking questions, but it's all foot traffic. It's you know you and you're gonna have the people that do calling off the internet from others, but. Sure. I know people in that business has been that business for 30 years and it's all about uh, right then and there when they show up, when they're on the lot, because that's where the sale is made. Uh, that's a business where if you ask the average good car sales guy, if he could order 50 leads a week, where people said, yeah, I think I probably might be interested in talking to someone about this kind of car at this amount of money. I got this many kids, so I need this afford order. They would order yesterday. Absolutely. <laughs> money would be no option. They're like, yeah, take my you know, money. They would just dole it out and be like, yeah, bring money. I'm just going to sit back here. I'm going to make my calls. I'm going to make my calls. I'm going to make my calls. There are businesses, there are, there's jobs out there where there's no leads. You just, you can't, you, you just, retail's another one. Really no leads, right? So I always, the, the one of the, and that's one of the main reasons I got into this is 
I looked, I was, I was downsizing our property management and I, and that was very lead driven. Right. And I wanted to look at something that was uh, needed, right? It was kind of not a commodity, but it was needed. Uh, there was not a whole lot of government going on with it. Like government kind of kept their nose out of it, even though it's the most highly regulated industry in the world. What the Seriously. hell was I thinking, right? But, right. <laughs> but uh, and and that you could uh, you could get leads. There's leads out there for it, right? You could go to people and get leads. So. When I found that out and I looked a little closer, I was like, well, there's leads out there, man. I can work leads for this. I can, you know, I know I can, I can sell, I can figure out what to say. And if I can't, there's somebody out there I can ask that knows better than me. And that's what I did. So if, you know, listen to people that's done it for you, they know. Absolutely. <laughs> most, of the time they're not, most of the time they're not going to steer you wrong. It leads are the lifeblood of this industry. They yeah. are like, if, if you don't have leads, it's like your oxygen's getting cut, cut off. You yeah. have to have good leads. And a lot of agents don't know places to go for good leads. They just don't, they get shined on by these places that they tell you they're the exclusive lead found on the web or internet. And yeah. they're getting shared yeah. like the village bicycle. And you're wondering yeah. why your manager's been there before you and sold them already. And you're like, I thought this was exclusive. No, it's not. Yeah. If Five or six hour digital leads. You see them all over the place. They're all over Facebook. Um, absolutely i see them all the time and i just i'm like okay all right get what you pay for and, and you've got yeah. inbound leads too you oh, know yeah. for medicare yeah. and live maybe we'll talk to the audience so you guys understand how his inbound lead program works because there's some agents yeah. that are just not designed for outbound and it's not that they're yeah. not really good agents but they don't have that motivation to be making those dials so they need a good source for those inbound leads so maybe we can chat a little bit yeah. about your inbound for them yeah, so inbound and, you know, we looked at it a couple different ways. We were like, okay, are we going to do this where we're not going to do it to a call center for a bigger agency or we want to offer it to the independent agent? So we're going to do it for independent agents too. But the, the main breakdown is obviously uh, the calls are made, they're recorded. We're working off, uh, you know, the token data, so they're compliant. Um, and we're asking pretty much all the same questions. However, we're going to transfer them directly to the agent once we get um, permission to do so. So we're transferring them directly to the agent. Um, right now we have it. We really want the agent to be available from nine to five, Monday through Friday. Okay. Um, whatever their time, their time zone is. We want them available during those times. And typically it's going to, the, I think we've got it where it's going to start in, yeah, it could take up to four business days. Sometimes it's five. Sure, because before... they got its human involvement to get it yeah, going. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, before before they the calls even start, we usually will email um, the day before. You know, sometimes hey, your campaign starting tomorrow, so be available. But these guys already know when they're ordering. You know, basically on when they're filling out the information on the order form that that's what it dictates and start getting ready for you know the nine to five calls. We may change it up a little bit and do two four-hour splits where they can pick nine to one or one to five. Um, I can understand where some people may not want to be on the phone, you know, or have to uh, be available for eight hours, right? It doesn't mean you're going to get calls all eight hours. Correct. It just loves a nine to five. Like, who doesn't want to work a nine to five and get paid? Like, exactly. sign me up for that. Like, there's nights and weekends, that, no thanks, right? Yeah, there's some that are going to come in from nine to five, right? But it doesn't mean you're going to get a maybe a lead every hour or two leads every hour. It just means that's the time slotting where nine to one and maybe one to five. Uh, if they pick one of those four hour periods for the week instead of, so basically you're cutting your time in half that we're calling and transferring. Uh, so it is going to slow down the, the completion of the order. It is going to slow down, you know, how fast the order is completed because we're not going to, you we're going to not transfer probably more than two or three calls an hour to you. Now I'll be honest. There's sometimes there's, there's a campaign we have going on right now where a couple of times the guy got calls like boom, boom. Right. And he's like, Hey, I can't take these calls as fast. And we're like, Hey, don't worry, brother. We'll get some extra leads on top of that. Don't worry about that lead. We can see where it went to your voicemail because you weren't available. Uh, but that was our fault. Now, if it's going to voicemail just because you ain't answering your phone, 
We're not creating that. That's Absolutely lead, right? right. That's a lead. We're going to leave the information. You can call yep. them back. And we also have a guarantee of a 120 second buffer on the transfer calls, which means Ooh. if you're not on the phone with them after we transfer for at least two minutes, that lead don't count. We're going to, we're going to replace it. We're going to do a, another lead. So, and we have all that is all tracked and you can see it when it's happening. You see their name, all the information, their token ID, their, the recording, what the buffer time was. If there's no buffer time, when the voicemail, when the voicemail, when the voicemail, no answer, all those, you know, we, we did our part. So we need you to, to answer when you said you were, but like I said, absolutely, nobody's perfect. We've, we've made mistakes before and it's, and it's really, it, it's, it, it's with all companies that do live transfers. It's just of where you certain amount of agents you have calling for you, certain amount of telemarketing agents, uh, they just, for whatever reason, they got really good that day <laughs> and they just, they both were pounding and, and, and having good success and they just happened to hit it around the same time. Like, Somebody transferred a call, you know, at 1 10 p.m. And then somebody transferred a call at 1 15 p.m. It's really not enough time. Good problem to have. Yeah, I it mean, is. That, it for is. an agent, it's yeah. like being busy instead of yeah. like banging phones all day long. It's yeah. basically you're taking the heavy lifting away, that mm-hmm. burden away from the agent, have to be dialing and dialing and dialing mm-hmm. and dialing. Let Matt and his team do that so that you can just take that inbound call. Yes, you pay a little bit more for it, mm-hmm. but I mean, think of how many. Okay, hours well, what's your time you worth to, when you get really good, right? You know, and if you're crushing it, it's all about the acquisition, right? It's that, yeah, that. Acquisition. But I've told people too. I've had people, um, probably a couple of your agents, maybe even that have asked me, say, "Hey, you think I should try these?" I'm like, "Man, what are your numbers like on the callback leads?" And right? Like, they're they're good. I'm like, ah, I wouldn't change the thing until they start right. second. Don't I wouldn't even I wouldn't change. I mean, I said, you know, if you want to try a batch, okay, but sure. if your closing ratios are good and you're comfortable with what you're doing, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, yeah. You've had that conversation with a couple of my reps and they respect you highly, just like I respect you highly. And it you're good people, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. I'm always gonna shoot straight with you. Um, and that's been a conversation you've had with a couple of my reps because like, oh yeah. hey, what about this inbound? And our guys and gals that I partner with love my work family, they don't have a hustle muscle problem and they don't have a right. skill set problem and that's right. why it's like their ratios are pretty right and tight yeah, exactly but, but yeah i can always agents- tell i can always tell i can always tell immediately if i get an email on a question about leads i can i can almost 99 percent of the time tell you how long the agent's probably been doing this what kind of training they have or haven't had and if they're with uh, a, a good group i can and most of the time i'm right after i talk to them i'm pretty i'm pretty right on and i tell some guys things they don't want to hear right like they'll ask me out of the blue well, i'll get an email that says hey if i order 25 of these leads you know a week can i expect a 25 percent, 20 percent closing ratio and when i get an email like that I know I need to, I need to inform this person on the law. <laughs> right. I have know, a little heart to heart. Yeah. I need to explain to them. This is not the way that works. You know, I would love to tell you, yeah, man, you order, uh, you order 25 of these a week and you're going to close 20% of them. Far not all the time. Can't say that because I don't know what your script is. I don't know what your train is. I don't know what your carriers are. I don't know where you're at. Uh, I don't know how good you are. You know, where did you come from? There's just so many variables that uh, it always, it always works its way back around to you need to get your script right. You need to get that open statement, right. Mm. And don't listen to the recordings before you call them. If you want to listen to them afterwards, go for it. But you know, even then it's worthless. Here's the thing though. And all you guys out there, listen to what I'm going to say here because I'm fixing to save you a lot of money and make you a lot of money. How long do you think it would take you to sit down and listen to 25 recorded calls that are anywhere from three 
to eight minutes a piece. How long is it going to take you to listen to all that? And think of the garbage in your head from listening to that many conversations before you make a call. And what are you doing when you're listening to that? Are you making notes? Oh, this one sounds weak. Right here, man. No, you're not going to sell that guy. You just put a, a affirmation down that that lead sucked. So no, you're not going to sell him. But how much time have you wasted sitting there listening to all this crap? Because I hate to say it, you got a poverty mindset. And you need to get out of that. And you need just to go to work on the leads. As Dave Ramsey says, I love him or hate him. I love him for some of the stuff. Hey, get behind the business end of a lawnmower. Right. And then work to that John Deere tractor. Dark because question. if you're sitting, and I listen to a lot of leads, man. So I know where I'm coming from on this. It takes a lot of time and effort to listen to 25 leads. So what could you have done in that time frame? Number one, you would have saved the garbage in, garbage out mentality of your mind playing tricks on you. No matter how long you've been doing this. Number two, you would have saved time by just getting on the phone and making contact and you know, having them in your system going. So right. that is going to save a lot of people, a lot of time and money, just, you know, sitting there and just, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words sometimes squeezing that squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And really you're looking at the wrong thing. Um, they're the same people that fill out direct mail. They're the same people that do the Facebook. They're the same people. Well, Google's a little different. <laughs> They're right. not the same people on Google. But uh, they are for a lot of them. So we don't get a recording with direct mail. You, you know, again, it's for compliance and proof calls were made to protect you and us. It's not to, and it's to extract a little bit more information than you don't get in a direct mail card. Um but it's not to try to figure out whether the lead is a lay down or not. I mean, there's thousands of calls a day that we make that we, that I know the, the telemarketing guys are like, Oh, I got him. I got, Oh, you never hear those because we're not, they're not sent as leads. And if they are, we will replace it. It happens. Right. But there's so Absolutely. many that never even make it to that point in QA <laughs> because they didn't complete the call. Agents prejudge leads. It's like, you know, they prejudge them so hard, whether it's a age lead, whether it's a direct mail lead, whether it's a SEO lead that you have, a great Facebook lead that you have, or in a telemarketed lead or an inbound lead. Agents are so jaded when really they should just be calling high action high action yeah. keep a good mental mindset every one of you watching keep a positive mental attitude take careful notes from what matt just dropped you it was absolute gold to you the audience you have to be about going and going and doing and seeing the people and dialing and being dialed in if you listen to a bunch of trash it takes bandwidth it takes from you before you it programs even, you it, programs it does you. It, it's horrid and yeah. it's like you can't have a positive result with a poisoned mind. And if you have a, a, a oh, wow, well, this call is going to be really grouchy and horrible. If you could horrible. hear, if I could have recorded, and uh, because Allie used to do my appointment setting, and she also, she's worked for a lot of top guys. I mean, guys that are writing four and 500,000 a year. She's worked Absolutely. for like six or seven of those guys. We're gonna, me and her are going to do a podcast here soon about appointment setting, right, for guys that still want to, you know, local that are needed. But if you could hear the calls, if I could record a lot of the calls that were made to direct mail prospects, right, after the hey. card came in, it's the same damn thing. It's the same yes. response. It's the same response. And there was no recording involved. It, she didn't have... And she worked teleleads too. She never listened to the calls. Matter of fact, I tell any guy that's got an appointment center, 
Don't let your appointment center Don't listen give them to these calls. Yeah. Don't give, just send them the spreadsheet with the info. Do not link the recordings to it because it will screw with them even worse. <laughs> Her head gets messed They're not up in even this an industry. Agent. Yeah. Right. So, it, it messes with you. Yeah. Like if, if the moment you start having this poisoned mindset, right? Even direct mail leads. I've been, and, and Matt has. Two, Everybody gets a point of burnout. We, we've gone to that front door, yeah. haven't we, Matt? We go to that yeah. front door. We've got the return address label from Grandma, her got a handwriting. <laughs> and we're like, Mrs. Johnson, I'm right here. I'm getting back to you about your request about final expense life insurance. She's I never asked for that. I never did this. And you're like, but here's the card. And she's like, get off my lawn, bam. And it's like, so it doesn't matter what lead and you got. What holds and what what is used in legal documents more, okay? A signature? Or recording a freaking signature, and you've I, got that on the card, and they still tell you to piss off sometimes. Absolutely. So, so that, it just is us as agents, right? We're special, we're a special breed, and we got to blame something. We can't look into the mirror and say, Hey, my script's horrible. We can't look in the mirror and say, My <laughs> mind's off, right? That That's we don't take, we don't like taking ownership as insurance agents. We got I A1 personality most of the time. Yeah. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah so, it, it, but to have good leads, you know. Yeah, I appreciate everything you're doing for the industry and yeah, man, I appreciate lead. you. You're you're making a huge impact on, uh, you know, training and, and getting these guys to understand where, you know, kind of the mindset you have to be in. Uh, it's okay to expect a lot, but just expect that if you're expecting a lot, there's a lot you're going to have to do. Um, you, you're going to have to put in the work and. And hey, man, there's there is a there is a light at the end of that tunnel. The horizon doesn't go on forever, so you'll get there. But and, and everybody has to start somewhere. But you know, again, you got to have the flow. You got to have that coming in so that you don't worry. I mean, think about it like this: it, it must be it must be really frightening. To be in an in some whatever they are, we mentioned some retail cars right. that you don't have the ability to go out and just materialize interested parties in what you have to sell. That's that I, I don't know if I could sleep at night not having uh, a source of leads um, to work. I, I don't. I, I really. I think it would scare me. Of course, um, it, it's it would it would drive you insane. Yeah, it'd be it like would. you're hungry and you don't know if you're ever going to get another meal. Like, yeah. am I going to get fed tomorrow three times, or am I not going to have a meal ticket for a week? It, it's yeah. like it, you're like skin and bones, as opposed to what we do. We can get yeah. good leads from you and be like, hey, you know, Matt, I need some leads. And for those of you watching, theleadjerk.com. Okay, and you Thank can you. go get as many leads as you can afford yep. and that's going to help you as an agent accelerate go get some facebook leads get some inbound leads get some medicare leads get okay seo leads get whatever great leads that you need to get in your hands to go have conversations we're in a position where you can have this conveyor belt of yeah. prospects and i promise you it will increase when you have good scripting and good training it's going to increase your level of profitability because the more people that you can see, the higher chances you have to be profitable. But you've got to keep the leads flowing. Keep the leads going. You've got to be consistent if you want to really kill it in this industry. And a lot of agents yeah. get hurt. They do. Like, not everybody yeah. makes it. But if you can make it like myself, make it like Matt, make it in this industry where you've been in here a long time. We're kind of old dogs yeah. compared to a lot of these new cats in town, but we'll be yep. real with you enough to say it takes action and you got to believe in yourself. You got to invest everyone in yourself and get as many leads as you can, but then you got to work them. Yeah. Okay. If I and there's some agents somebody, out there that, that, that self generate, you know, right. um, and they can do it for a little while. Like we've talked about, you know, they could do maybe some Google stuff and some uh, Facebook stuff, but it's never on the same it's never on the same uh, level, uh, and they don't really know how to – I mean, there's courses out there they can take, but those guys are hawking courses. And the problem with that is that yeah. things change so fast with Facebook and Google. By the time you're done with a really? course on how to do it, everything's changed. Um, those guys hawking courses, not to cut you off, but those guys sure. hawking courses, they're not like, you know – 
bad horses, but you're dead on right here. Okay. And I've shed some light that a lot of people in the industry don't like me shedding light on, but there's these courses where you spend so many hundred bucks, you get a course and it works for a little bit Mm -hmm. and then it don't. And your lead spin goes through the roof. Oh yeah. Or I had an agent that, you know, he made his own leads or somebody else does it on their behalf. Right. And you pay thousands and that, yeah, it works like Ron Popeil's chicken for what a week or two or three. And then <laughs> all of a sudden your Calendly ain't working. Nobody's showing up. And yeah, you got a Calendly of nobody that's actually there. You thought you were going to have everything. You got nothing. I, I got great agents across the nation that have done their leads. They're smart. They're gifted. And let me tell you, it only works for so long until mm-hmm. it doesn't work. And then yep. you're going to get your checkbook out and you're going to start. You're going to hire a lead company. You are. Because that's like, all they do. They're not selling exactly. courses. They're actually, they actually know how the back end stuff works like we do. And Absolutely. also, how long would it take you to self-generate 25 telemarketing leads, you think? I, look, I don't know. I haven't done the time study, but it's if a, I had the TCPA compliance getting sued on it because you've I, got just enough to go play with some yeah. telemarketer. Well, let's, let's take that. Let's, let's let's even play devil's advocate and say, okay, let's give that benefit of the doubt. Right. Let's say you got great data and you ain't worried about that. How long do you think it would take an agent to call and generate 25 leads? I'd say it'd be over two weeks. Well, goodness, and the profitability that that just cut you. Yeah, eight agent. hours a day too, right? Oh, yeah. And then you're babysitting. You're babysitting. <sighs> no, thanks. I don't got time for that. Yeah. No. Like, I'm like, take my money. Take my money. Okay. When I, I, first, you, when I first got into this, I've never told anybody this. Me and another guy that, that got started about the same time I did, we actually, we actually met. Uh, he was actually – he owned uh, another – he owned another kind of company, a different industry, and so did I. When we kind of met up. We lived in the same area, and he, and he emailed me. He's like, hey, man, you mind if I ride along with you? You know, this was when I was like 65%. He goes, I'm thinking about getting into this. And this guy was sharp, man. He was really good. He went on to be a really good agent. Uh, so he rode with me for about a week. He's like, I was like, you think you can do it? And he's like, yeah, I think I can do it. I was like, well, here's what you need to do, whatever, whatever. He's the one that actually brought back to me and said, hey, this guy, these guys over here have got this commission rate, right? You need to come over here, dog. We got this, this, and this. I'm like, you know what? He's actually right. <laughs> so, boom, I went. Now, he didn't sponsor me, but he just let me know, hey, you need to get with this group. So, I did. But back to the reason I'm bringing this up. After a couple of years, me and him got together and was like, man, I wonder if there's any way we could like self-generate our own calls. Like if we could self-generate our own leads from calling. So we took a stab at it, right? We tried it. We tried. We bought the data. We had the dollar. We had the CRM. And man, after three days, we were like, screw this. This is for dogs. This can go with the birds. We are done. I am not, I'm not going to get hung up on, on me another time. It messed with our psyche so bad that I don't even think we went out and sold for a couple of weeks. We were so traumatized. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Like you can either be a professional marketer, in my opinion, or a professional agent. It's it takes a tough dog <laughs> and a tough breed to do both. Okay. These guys get beat up, Jason. They get beat up, and agents don't hear that. And it not that even matters at the end of the day about being alpha and whatever you're doing. It, I can understand you're going, well, I don't care. I'm paying you for this. I understand, but they do. They get beat up. And there is a life cycle to a telemarketer. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just like everything. Facebook leads, there's a life cycle to your ad and everything else. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, yeah, the agents spend thousands, get their little Facebook lead systems thinking that's the holy grail. And then they find out after about a month, they got got. And they're like, oh, crud. You know, or they've done the Facebook lead system for a couple of years, and now they're spending so much time being coming a professional marketer that they're not even deploying high action, which is what insurance sales yeah. is about. It's like you're going to save two, three bucks on a lead, spend thousands for somebody to maybe do it for you, and it'll work for a little bit, and then it won't. Yeah. And then you go weeks without income because you're so frustrated mentally on trying to become a marketer. And that's why it's like, yeah. forget this. I'm going to let good people handle the yep. leads and I'm going to be about what I need to be doing. And that is, you know what? I'm going to go see the people, talk to the people 
And that's where like, like, stuff. Yeah. Work. Get that off your back. Uh, and, and guys that can run their, their final expense business on and, and get a decent amount of referrals. God bless you. You're a pariah. Like oh. I just always found it is not a referral based business. I had to have leads. Medicare is a little different. Right. Uh, you get somebody a good deal on a Medicare product. They talk, they but they're everybody. a different income level too. They're a right. different kind of, they're a different person. They're a different type of, of prospect. And uh, that's more of a referral type thing. And it's got its drawbacks too. But, um, you know, FE, I just, I never, and I did all the right things, checked all the right boxes. I never could get a, a decent amount of referrals. Never. Even Medicare, you know, I do a ton of Tough. Medicare as well. Yeah. And we do even annuity business yeah. a lot as well. But that annuity business is not telesales, okay? Just for those yeah. who are watching. Don't yeah. let anybody front you. Anybody saying you can do, okay, annuities over Zoom and annuities telesales, they're lying to your face. They're working daddy's yeah, That's a lot of money you're talking about working with, too, exactly. in annuities. So, I'm not yeah, going to cut you a check for 100 k if I don't see your face, right? Nobody heck else no. Will, uh -uh. Honest. No. But it's one of those things where it's like, we got to get after it. See the people, see the people, but man like these crutches of the industry yeah it's crazy yeah exactly it's a crutch so but, thought i'd share that with you it's uh, no. something me and him <laughs> we tried it <laughs> to quit being a professional marketer like yeah you we will were not our hair out. It. it's like, it's like when we go have time to sell go get, go get leads. leads in and then when are we gonna sell them we gotta you don't we have gotta time. be we gotta be calling generating leads and 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 calling the leads we did generate to sell it, it never would have worked and that's why inbounds are so nice because it's like yeah. if you got inbound leads, it's like it's a guaranteed conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you watching, yeah. is it a guaranteed conversion? No. no. Okay. And agents think this. They think sometimes not, you know, the agents that partner with me, yeah. but a lot of agents yeah. elsewhere, they think that, oh, well, if I get an inbound lead, if I get two of them, well, Matt, those got to be sales. Okay, buddy. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. You there's no have, such thing as a lay down. No exactly. such thing in anything. You got to work. I mean, it happens, but it's rare. It is rare. But so. yeah, no, leads are leads are awesome. So for those of you watching, you know, the leadjerk.com, Matt's a good source, great man. Um, and I appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, I appreciate y'all too. I find that your agents are uh um and, and there's other agencies too that that are doing you know the right thing. Um I can always I can always tell, I can always tell the ones that are um training, right? The ones that are that have that at the at the uh, peak of what they're doing is the training because again if you don't have that down if you don't have that down then th th you're just gonna waste your money it's gonna waste your money not having that uh, situated first so that's the first thing uh, that you gotta do to put gas in that in that uh, insurance engine is to get that training when you get the training and you're with a good group. Um, then go spend some money on leads, decide where you want to go. And again, I don't, I'd love for you to buy from me. I really would, but just, you're going to be in a much better position. Um, having a proven script, right? A proven way to do this. You're going to be light years ahead of somebody that doesn't. And they could work the same exact leads that you get in this. They could work actually the same exact leads, right? and propel past you if you don't have that already in place. That's how important that is. Like we say leads are important, they are, but I think training on how to work the lead is pinnacle. You gotta have that. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. And yep. you know, for those of you watching, reach out theleadjerk.com. All right, you can get any of his inbound Medicare leads, final expense leads, okay, his SEO leads, Facebook, he's got them all. Check them out, okay? He's a good place for you, the audience, to be able to find some good traction in an industry that kind of takes advantage of you a lot, where it's like, go make this, go do that, go do this. There is, okay, zero money changing hands here for you, the audience, yeah, as you all know about yeah. me anyway, so – Vet your trainer, vet your lead vendor for sure, but this is a good one. So, Matt, I appreciate you, Thank buddy. You. And for those of you watching, any of you the audience, if you need help in any way, reach out to jasonfinalexpense.com. Matt, thank you for joining us, buddy, for everything you do. Thank for you, me. Jason. I appreciate it very much, and um, I look forward to, you know, hopefully doing this again soon. 
Absolutely. Sure will. Have a good one, you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. Bye, guys.